Hey guys, so to end up, to round off the week, so I believe uh, we're gonna do Pharaohs, Born of the Gods, Journey into Nyx, and then M15. M15 will probably be Thursday, uh, which would be today. Uh, to round off the week, let's do M15. M15 I love a lot, and there's a creature type. So let me go over a story with you. This creature and is $35. I bought it for like $2 when it rotated out. And I have play sets of most of these foil cards. They are called slivers. M15 is a very interesting set because a sliver that used to be two bucks in foil is now 35 in foil, and that's just how it goes. Like, slivers are a popular type. Do we have any sliver cards in M15 which might be good? Yes, we do. Number five, I, I love this card. Sliver, Hive, Hive with a uh, H-I-V-E. A very, very powerful card. I think it's perfect for the Sliver deck. I think it's very good. Um, the Sliver isn't just a 1-1. One, one. It's a 1-1 one, one with a horde of abilities. Um, so it's, you know, whenever you're looking at lands, you have to look at, does this land do something unique for a certain deck? Like Cavern of Souls, I hit it pretty big with that card. But that's because I realized, hey, you know, people don't like to get stuff countered. This card helps you do that. I think it's worth playing. And at that time, Cavern Souls was a very skeptical speculation because people were saying you can never... At that time, people were saying you could not never speculate on rares anymore. You only had to do big and bad mythics. And that's not true. Uh, so Sliver Hive is a non-mythic. It is a rare, and it's pretty good. Now, Sliver Hive Lord, I have number four. Obviously, foil copies of these are better than non-foil. Slivers have just generally been very good. Um, I have never purchased a foil sliver and like regretted or it's gone down in price. It's only really gone up in price. And hey, in the future, they will keep printing more and more and more. Like if you feel like M15 is the last time you're going to see this type of creature, no, they are a very popular type of creature. Wizards of Coast knows that. Every time you print a new one, they get better, just like the allies. And I'll talk about the allies a little more this week or maybe previous videos. I like it, Sliver Hide, very good, especially in foil. Oh, Sliver Hive Lord, very good. Uh, number three, a Johnny Steadfast. Now, let me talk about Johnny Steadfast a little bit. Uh, he is interesting. Um, he's interesting from the standpoint that yes, he's a planeswalker, yes, he's extremely cheap, and he's a, a Johnny. So as we move to more human creatures like Gideon and uh, people definitely like a Johnny. I personally don't like a Johnny. I think he's one of the, um, and you can leave a comment if you disagree. I don't think he's one of my favorite planeswalkers, but people like a Johnny. People like cats. We're on the internet where cats dominate the internet. We are, you know, at locals where people have cats. I have cats. I love my cats. People love cats. A Johnny is a cat. I mean, as ridiculous as it sounds, sometimes that's enough for a casual player to be like, oh, I want to make a cat deck. Okay, is there any cat planeswalkers? Oh, there's this one right here. I just gotta get all versions of him. And you might think that's kind of crazy, but when I typically trade a Johnny away, I'm trading like multiple versions of a Johnny away to someone who wants to make a cat deck. And how many people at Locals have cat decks? At least four or five of them. I, I almost had a cat deck. <laughs> so yes, a Johnny is interesting. Number two, Court of Calling. This card is expensive right now for a, um, I'm trying to keep these speculations a little like lower money. I'm not gonna hit any of the bigger speculations. I could say, oh yeah, everyone should just buy dual lands, but like, who's that really helping? Like, what percent of my audience is gonna go like, yeah, I can afford that. Let me go speculate on that. Um, yeah, so anyway, I like Court of Call Calling. It, I have it as number two because it is more expensive than my number one. And I see it being very quarter calling. I see it being very good. I see it being a unique ability, which I love. But my number one is Orgbog. Orgbog used to be a $20 card or $25 card before reprints. Um, he had a, from the uh, Legends or what was it called? Like from the Lands or Realms. That's what it's called. From the Vault Realms reprint and foil. Then he had the M15 reprint, and I just love it because it does show, it does, it is incredible as a one of. Um, will it be played as a four of? Probably not, but as a one of, it is incredibly useful, incredibly good, and I think it does deserve its place among, um, you know, I mean, as on top of M15. 
So do you guys agree with my list? Do you disagree with it? Do you have other cards you want to add? Do you think my top five is uh, list is not good? Do you think I, oh, I'm overvaluing some of these cards? Leave a comment below and I'll be sure to uh, give you guys a comment back. Bye guys.